What's up, YouTube? So this might be a little longer one, so let me jump right into it. Earlier today, I was uh, going back and forth in the comments uh, with somebody in regards to the plastic ratings for uh, food storage items. And there is a lot of confusion on this topic, so I wanted to go ahead and, and post up a, a video and try and clear it up a bit. So here is the deal with plastic food storage. Okay, the, the first thing is to give an overall impression. All plastics have really nasty shit in them. And they're continuing their research into finding out just how nasty this stuff is and, and what its uh, health effects are. So, unfortunately, you know, pretty much anything that you're storing in plastic, it's, it's just, it's not ideal. Uh, obviously, plastic is, it comes from oils and chemicals and one way or another if it's long term that's going into the food um, okay contrary to popular belief the number underneath most uh, plastic containers that's surrounded by the the three little arrow triangle that number has nothing to do with uh, any kind of food safety issue or, or anything like that that number is a recycling rating and it's just basically categorizing categorizing the type of plastic that the container is so when it goes to get recycled uh, you know gets basically thrown into the, the right pile um, another point is that this code is voluntarily put on there by most manufacturers uh, not even all manufacturers so that's the reason why some actual containers don't have any code at all uh, it's not illegal for them to do that now if you start to go down the rabbit hole on this issue and you, you can take a look at the FDA link I'll drop in the description box um, you'll you'll see the sheer complexity uh, of this of this whole issue and it stems from two basic reasons uh, the first reason is that plastics are used for such a wide variety of products it's almost impossible to have a realistic standards um, in other words you know you might have a plastic wrapper around a chocolate bar and you know let's say Hershey's decides to make that three millimeter thick resin number three while uh, another company uses a two millimeter thick resin number four to package their chips in there's so many different products and there's so many different uses that uh, it's it's really hard to lock down and say look you have to use this one specific thing for you know this use and this specific thing for this other use so that's the first reason the second reason is that creating these plastics uh, you have ingredients and you have processes so to oversimplify this one company may add a little color number five and then a little plastic number seven to to make their uh, you know plastic container and another company may use a little fragrance number six a little plastic number two and a little plastic number three each individual ingredient is is studied and uh you know that's really what the FDA looks at to make sure that the the chemicals in these containers aren't going to poison your food. So each individual ingredient is studied, but again, there's no firm standards that certain plastics have to be an absolute certain makeup. So you have a, a lot of variation on how you can uh, get to a specific type of plastic. Most of the confusion on this issue comes up with the fact that the FDA may approve virtually any one of the resin codes as food safe. So it's it's resin codes one through seven and they can basically say any one of these is suitable for food. Uh, it's not like, you know, five through seven or one through three, you know, absolutely cannot have food. No, they all can have food if they meet s specific requirements. Uh, and when I say food, I'm grouping water into that as well. Um, now, again, the confusion here is that for non-food use, these same set, these same one through seven set of resin codes for non-food use, the FDA doesn't look at the product at all. Okay, so basically you can have the same exact resin identification code. It's intended for two completely different uses. One is harmful for, you know, food usage and one is not. Okay, basically all scotch is whiskey but not all whiskey is scotch. That's what you want to remember. Okay, so I'm going to break down some of these uh, 
resident identification code categories. Again, it goes from one through seven, and I'm not gonna go through all of them because it would take too long, and you'll have the links, so you can go check it out yourself. Uh, but like, for example, just, just showing you my point here to this video, for number one, which is PET, and it says the product applications for that are plastic bottles for soft drinks, for water, for juice, sports drinks, beer, mouthwash, mouthwash, uh, ketchup, salad dressing, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, food jars for peanut butter, jelly, jam, pickles, and well, that's it for that. Um, now, at the same time, the same exact product, or uh, not, not the see that's the thing, not the same exact product, but the same exact uh, category, the same exact classification, can be used for ovenable film, microwavable food trays, um, monofilament carpet strapping films and engineering moldings okay let me jump down to let me find a, a good one here all right well let's let's just take uh number four for an example um what are the uses for that okay coatings for paper milk cartons and hot and cold beverage cups container lids uh, squeezable bottles like honey and mustard, um, bags for dry cleaning, newspapers, bread, frozen foods, fresh produce, and household garbage. But let's not forget container lids, toys. That's kind of an interesting one, just toys in general. Um, but also adhesives and sealants and wire and cable coverings. So again, this is your your category, your resin identification code four, which on the one hand is good for, uh, you know, a honey in a mustard container, but it, on the other hand is good for to being used as an adhesive and a sealant and also for toys. So you can see that again, wide spectrum, lots of diff different uses. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a look here at uh, my little hummus here, which is actually way out of date, but uh, that's how it goes sometimes and I actually I checked before I did this and it's right over here which you can't see it's really really tiny this is number five uh, polypropylene and I actually if I remember correctly the person that I was speaking to uh, on the channel via the comments had actually said to stay away from number five that's what they had thought I'm not a hundred percent that they said that I think I remember it but again it just goes to show you there is a lot of confusion on this whole thing Okay, that's back in frame, right? Okay, good. Basically, here's the breakdown of how you choose your food storage containers. Number one, go with containers that are labeled or designated food safe or for food. You know, you got to see if you can, if, you know, obviously if you're going to, if you're getting something that, that has food in it, then, you know, you're good. But if you're getting a generic container, you want to try and find out for sure if it's designated food safe or if it's for food. Um, number two, go with containers that were already storing food. I think I just said that. Um, if you find a store that's selling diesel fuel in small two gallon containers that are these really nifty two gallon containers with the airlock seal and they're really cool and they're really great and they have a bunch of unused containers in the back, you know, don't expect that uh, those diesel fuel containers are going to be suitable to hold your rice in. You know, they they were made for the idea of uh, storing diesel fuel, not rice. You know, that's that's a flag. That's a warning warning flag. I, you know, don't don't put your food in there. Um, number three, when in doubt, if you're forced to go blind, uh, you know, if you're just you you can't find out if it's food safe. Uh, it didn't come from a food source and you know you just have to put your you're in a situation where you have to put your food in it here's what you do and I'm gonna read from uh, an article that I'm gonna link from the goodhuman.com I have no idea who they are but uh, let's see they say according to the Green Guide a website and magazine devoted to greener living and owned by the National Geographic Society the safest plastics for repeated use and storing food are made from high density uh, polyethylene HDPE or plastic number two, uh, low density LDPE plastic number four, or polypropylene plastic number five. So two, four, and five. 
go for those if you're you're forced to jump into it. And they do say you want to stay away from uh, number seven uh, in this article, but as well as in other articles and, and other research, the polycarbonate which is uh, found in not all, again confusing, but it's not in all, but it is in a bunch of the ID number seven, they contain uh, larger quantities of the bisphenol A, which is the BPA, which has been in the news a lot recently about how it's screwing up the hormones, causing cancer, brain damage, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So it's just basically stay away from number seven. I'll link a couple articles more about the uh, BPA and you can do a little more research on that and find out how bad that is Okay, also in general keep your stuff in a cool space because uh, Whether it's a, a liquid or a dry food or whatever You know the, the the hotter the plastic gets the more it's going to quicker more and the quicker it's going to leach in uh, any type of you know chemical residue into what it's storing of course, if you have some sort of acidic uh, liquid in there, it's going to grab the bad chemicals a lot faster than dry rice or oatmeal or whatever. But you know, that's just common sense. So try and keep your stuff in, in a cool space. I'd say try and keep it out of sunlight. Let's put it this way. If you're going to microwave your plastic, confirm before you do that that the plastic is good for microwaving. Personally, I don't recommend anybody microwaving plastic, but that's me. Then again, I don't really use a microwave, so hey. Um, I'm going to start to wrap it up by telling you that, you know, even though all this stuff is really not positive for us, because like I said, the plastic is all chemicals and it's, it, it, it's not going to benefit us in any way by holding our food for a long time. You know, don't stress about it too much because, you know, we've really been killing ourselves since day one. If you look back in history, uh, they used to use lead uh, mugs and goblets and uh, lead, lead based, um, what do you call it, utensils. Um, obviously not solid lead, although I do sort of remember them. Uh, I think I remember a solid lead goblet at one point. Um, but in the glass, you know, they would have high concentrations of lead. And in the old pewter stuff, that's where you'd have your high concentrations of lead. And, you know, that's why you can't even really go... Glass is obviously safer than a lot of plastics, but you still have these issues of, well, well what the hell is in the glass? You know, where did it come from? I remember a while back, a couple of years ago, there was a, a big recall of Chinese glasses that had a whole bunch of lead in them. So, you know what? The bottom line is that nothing's 100% safe. And, uh, you know, we're mortal and we're on this earth for a limited time. So put an effort into doing the right thing and, and trying to, you know, protect yourself and do a little research to get your knowledge. But don't, you know, lose a lot of sleep over it. The last thing I'm going to say for this video is that in my research doing this, I found this little tidbit. And it said that they are starting to inject nano silver into plastics uh, in order to keep your foods as fresh as possible for as long as possible look for plastics with new nano silver technology these plastics have tiny silver particles in them and are supposed to help retard food spoilage that's the first i had heard of that and i thought it was pretty cool and it's especially pretty cool if you're a silver bug because that could be the wave of the future especially with all this bpa stuff coming out you know keep your eye on that one uh i think that's it i think i got all my notes out of the way later youtube hope it was helpful